Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Factorio 101. I am your host, Alex, and you are watching FCOG Gaming. Uh, now, I started off in this weird little corner uh, for a reason uh, to show off a couple different parts of the logistics, logistics network, um, which is what we're covering today, if you can figure that out by the title. Um, so anyway, I've got a fast inserter going into a passive provider chest, um, which is gathering iron for me, as you can see, and the same setup down here, but with copper. And I've also got a storage chest, which is holding a number of uh, iron and copper as well. Um, now we'll kind of get into the practice of using uh, the different logistics storage boxes. Uh, but for the most part, the passive provider chest will hold something until it's needed. Uh, storage is just basically for overflow. Um, if you have too much of something in the system, that's where it's going to put it. And uh, yeah, that's the only storage boxes that I have out right now. But uh, we'll get into a couple more here in a second. So when you're setting up any robotic network, uh, obviously you will need a RoboCore. That's where the uh, robots that aren't doing anything go and are stored. It's also where the robots get charged up. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to make my first construction area right down here. And uh, the colorization, the orange, is where the logistics robots can go. The green is where the construction robots can go, which will make a little bit more sense here in a second. And actually, I'm going to make this up here uh, so that it covers my iron and copper boxes. So let's go ahead and we'll just put that down. And that does cover just barely the iron box and the storage box. So, uh, with that, we're going to need robots. I've previously crafted uh, 25 logistics robots and 10 construction robots. And the reason I did that off screen is because they take forever to craft. Um, the biggest time consuming part is the robotic frame. Um, yeah, and that, it just, it takes forever if you're doing manually. So, uh, we just grab those and drag and right click around your player. That unleashes the robots into the world. They'll find a robot port to sit in until they're needed. Um, so what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to set up a logistics factory um, to make all the parts that you need to make a logistics factory so that it's kind of self-sustaining. Um, and we're going to do that with a combination of logistics robots bringing in the materials and uh, construction robots that are going to be building everything. Um, also, I should note, I do have over here uh, steel in the network as well, which will be important at some point. Anyway. Um, so the way that I like to lay these out, and you can do them however you want, uh, but this is just my preferred method, is I like to have uh, two assembling machines kind of off to the side of each other, three spaces in between, and with that, you can put uh, three requ or a requester chest and a passive provider chest in between them, and off of the requester chest, we will have a fast inserter and going into the provider chest we'll have smart inserters and we will power that all up with a medium electric pole. Now uh, one thing that I kind of skipped over, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, is once you have the research done for uh, character trash slots or logistics slots, well and logistics slots, um, you can use your robots to kind of help manage your inventory. Um, that storage box that had copper and iron in it, that was the copper and iron that I was holding um, before I started this episode. And if we click on our logistics 
logistics slot, I can say, okay, robots, keep uh, 200 iron plates in my inventory, at least 200 in my inventory at all times. And I'll set that same thing for copper. And what's going to happen is you heard that noise with the robot quarter opening. And these robots are going to go up to that box, grab the iron, and deliver it to me. And I'm just going to stand here to kind of help uh, that process go a little bit faster since these robots are relatively slow right now. But as you can see, they, they get the iron taken care of, and then they switch over to copper. And life is great. And when they're done, they head back to the RoboPort. And they're going to charge back up, and then they'll get stored. As you can see there. Okay. Ah, get off the get off the pipe. There we go. Okay. So, uh, before I designate anything on this factory, I'm going to make a blueprint of this factory. And really, all you have to do to get a blueprint is click this, and it all it takes is one advanced circuit. And we're going to click and drag over all of the parts that you want to be able to copy. So in this case, those two factories, the inserters, the power pole, and the boxes. And I'm just going to have that be my assembling machine blueprint. You click on that icon to create it, and you can kind of place it down wherever you want to. I'll do that in a second here. Um, so the first two things that I'm... Well, the first thing that I'm going to make is the medium electric pulse. That's fairly simple to do. Um, if you go into your logistics, hover over it, it takes two steel plates and two copper plates. Easy enough. So we're going to set this factory to make those. And in our requester chest, we're going to request steel plates and copper plates. Um, I usually do 10 times what it requires. Uh, that seems to give yourself a little bit of a, a buffer, uh, just so that if the robots are running behind for whatever reason, you don't run out of materials at least right away. So we'll go ahead and get copper. We'll get uh, 20 of those and 20 steel as well. And we'll let them kind of do their work. Now, when they fill up, this machine will take those uh, materials out of the box and start assembling, but the smart cert inserter doesn't have any instructions to tell it how or when to take the uh, electric poles out and put them into the logistics network. So if you right click on the smart inserter, um, it has this box down here that's logistics network condition. So if you click on that, what we can do is we can give it a, a logical um, formula, I, I guess you would, you would call it. Uh, that would be telling it when to activate the sensor. So I am going to go medium. If in our logistics network, the number of medium electric poles is less than 20 down here. And you, there's all sorts of possibilities for what you do, but I usually set it as a actual number, at least in this case. So let's set that, and that inserter is going to start going. And it will turn itself off as soon as there's 20 electric poles, or medium electric poles, in the system. And this is going to take a little bit while the logistics network kind of catches up with materials, but there's that. So let's go ahead. And, uh, well, I guess the next thing that we can do is uh, get set up to make these storage boxes. So if you look at all of the storage boxes that we have, um, they require a smart chest and an advanced circuit. Okay, so what does the smart chest take? It takes a steel chest 
and three electric circuits. So we can set that steel chest up really easy. All that takes is eight steel plates. Uh, we can go ahead and set that. We'll set the smart inserter and we'll keep, um, let's say 10 of those. Let's, let's keep 10 of those on hand. We'll set that. And we'll actually bump up the number of steel that it keeps to 30. Just to kind of keep things operating relatively smoothly. And as you can see, this has turned off. This factory is no longer working. And we have 20 um, medium poles in the logistics network. Just like I predicted. It's like I've done this before. So anyway, let's go ahead and plop down a, another set of these factories. And right away, we get a little error message down here that says, eight objects are missing material for construction, which is going to be the inserters, the assembling machines, and the boxes. Well, we don't have any of those in the logistics network, do we? So what I'm going to do, I've actually got um, boxes by these, um, by the smart inserter and the blue inserter. So I'm going to upgrade those boxes to passive provider chests. And actually, I'm going to completely move this one so that it's in the orange. Oh, I can't, can I? Well, dang it. <laughs> well, that presents a problem. Let's go ahead and just set this back up. There we go. Whatever. And... But anyway, it, it did grab those blue inserters out of there. Also, a little trick that you can do is if you have the trash slots, you can put in whatever they need. So these two guys are going to pick up my assembling machines. They're going to take it to that storage box. And then once, it in, once it's in the storage box, the logistics network, or the construction bots, I'm sorry, are going to pick it up and plop them down where I, I wanted it. Another way you can do that is during the provider chest. Um, go ahead and you can just put one of each of these down. Oh, those are requester chests. Never mind. In the provider chest, <laughs> you can put one of each of those down, and it'll go ahead and move those out of there. Like so. And just for right now, I'm going to put um, the smart inserters that I need right there as well. And there we go. Okay, so we were making the uh, smart boxes, correct? So, uh, the next thing that we need to make the smart chest is three electric circuits. And as we've gone over before, the electric circuits take copper cable and iron plate. So we're going to have one factory making copper cable, one factory making electric circuits, and we are going to request, uh, let's go with 50 copper and 50 iron. Now you could um, conceivably, like I've, I've got a overfill box here of electric circuits. I could just have it go that way, but it's generally a good idea to have what's in your logistics network be made in your logistics network. Just that way you're not messing up. Um, well, in this instance, uh, you wouldn't be messing up the advanced circuits that are getting made for the blue science. So I'm, like I said, I mean, you can do it however you want to, really. But, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, so we are going to have this keep on hand. Uh, let's go 50 uh, copper cables, just because we are going to be using those quite a bit right away. And we are going to keep 50 green science, or not green science, green... Uh, circuits as well. And once our bots kind of catch up here, that should get going. 
and that should start making these as soon as a bot decides to move these over to the requester chest. Oh, I don't have that set up. Duh. Okay. So let's just keep uh, 20 in there at any given time. Actually, no. We'll bump it up to 50. And that should happen relatively soon. So we'll go ahead and we'll put down another one of these blueprints. And we're still missing the same stuff, so let's go ahead and we can just put that in any old provider chest. We'll have two factories. We'll have two provider chests. And we'll have two requester chests and two smart inserts. Alright, and that's starting to go, so let's go ahead and make our smart chest. Which requires a steel chest and three electric circuits. So we'll go ahead and request... Oh, I put that down backwards, but... Oh well. We'll go ahead and request... Uh, let's go ten steel chests. And... 30 electric circuits. And we will keep 10 of these smart boxes on hand. And that should start going. There we go. It's starting to work. And obviously, eventually, you're going to want more of these logistics bots. I just made 25, um, just as an arbitrary number. And also, I don't have them upgraded. Uh, there are researches, researches. There are uh, certain research projects that you can do that make them faster and that make them carry more. So it doesn't look very efficient right now, but once you get the upgrades going, it's it's amazing. So we've got that going. Um, let's go ahead and set this to be one of the chests that we need. So I'm going to just choose Passive Provider Chest, and that requires a Smart Chest and an Advanced Circuit. Actually, I'm going to... well, no. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll wait on that. We're going to plop down another pair of factories here. Which is going to need smart inserters and assembling machines. So we got those, we got those. That should construct it. There we are. I'm going to set both of these to advanced circuits because advanced circuits take quite a long time to uh, to manufacture. And our requester chest is going to have 20 electric circuits, 20 plastic bar bars, and 40 copper cables. So, and I don't have plastic bars in the network yet, but we can change that soon enough. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. All right. That should start going relatively soon. And what I'm going to do is I've got this box here that's been holding uh, plastic bars. I'm going to turn that into a provider chest, which I need to make a couple provider chests. Let's just make five more of each of these. Alright. And so these bots should start picking those up. Adding them to the equation. And these should start kicking on here at some point. Um, <clears throat> now let's go ahead and keep uh, 50 advanced circuits on hand at any time. We'll go ahead and set that. 
And you can also copy and paste your smart inserters um, settings as well, just like you can copy and paste factory settings and stuff like that. Alright, so for the uh, provider chest, we need smart chest and advanced circuit. Uh, it takes one of each of those. So, we're going to go ahead and request 10 smart chests and 10 advanced circuits. Those advanced circuits are going to take a little bit of time to complete, but it should be okay. Hopefully these are getting made. I don't think they are. Oh, they're missing the electric circuit. Okay. That's fine. Are you just... Why is this not going? Copper cable? Oh, it's just... Yeah, it's just not keeping up. That's fine. Okay, do we have anything made yet? Anything at all. Oh, I forgot to set my smart inserter, that's one. Okay, uh, let's keep ten of these on hand as well. Alright, so let's put down another set of factories. Like so. And that's one less thing that we have to put into the, the network, which is great. So let's put our machines in there, some smart inserters in there, and a requester chest in there. And I'm going to queue up some more assembly machines to be made. Alright, and our next thing is going to be requester chests. So we'll do that. We'll also request 10 and 10 down here. So 10 of these guys. 10 of these guys. And we'll keep 10 provider or requester chests on hand as well. Alright, and at any time you can hover over uh, one of these boxes or a RoboPort. And it'll give you the number of um, logistics robots available and construction robots available. Also, it'll give you an overview of what's in your logistics network, which is kind of handy. Um, so as you can see, all of our bots are busy, which is kind of why there's a backlog right now. But uh, pretty soon, it's going to start catching up, uh, which is good. 25 bots is just not quite enough. Usually, once you get everything up and running, you need at least a few hundred of them uh, for everything to run smoothly. But we don't really have that luxury right now. So the next thing in the chain is going to be our assembling machine twos. So what does that requ require? That requires nine plates, three circuits, five gear wheels, and one assembling machine. Or assembling machine one. And that takes all the basic stuff. Um, all of these ingredients, except for the assembling machine one and the iron gear, gear wheels, are already being made. So, let's set this factory up to do iron gear wheels. We'll have iron gear wheels. We are going to keep, let's say, 50 of those on hand. Because they're, they're cheap and easy to produce. So we'll keep 50 of those on hand. And I am going to request, let's say, 100 iron. It's going to kill my robots, but 
should be okay. There we go. And then I'm going to put down a final set of factories. This should be all we need. At least for my demonstration purposes. Um, and we are going to need a spider chest, a few assembly machines. And two smart inserters. There we go. So this factory is going to be making assembling machine one. This factory is going to be making assembling machine two. And they require a lot of the same stuff. They they both require electric circuits, iron gears, and iron plates. So let's go ahead. Get in the right box here. Uh, let's do a hundred iron plates. Uh, let's do 50 gear wheels, and let's do 50 electric circuits. We're also going to request uh, 10 assembling machines, because that's an ingredient in the assembling machine, too. So we are going to keep 10 of each of these in our network. We'll do that. Actually, I'm going to clear these out just so that the robots quit spending their time giving me materials because I don't really need it. And eventually, we're going to start catching up here. So while that's starting to catch up, what I, I'm, I'm going to show you a couple other tricks that you can do. Um, if you craft this deconstruction planner, what that does is anything that you click, click and drag over is going to get deconstructed. So let's say I have a string of pipes like that, and I don't need it anymore. Like whatever factory that it was running to uh, just isn't working, it ran out of materials, I moved it, whatever. Instead of going along and picking up every single one, you can have your robots do it. And you just click and drag over like that, your construction robots will come along, and they are going to put that into uh, a storage box. Or if there's a requester chest that's missing it, it'll put it into that first. Another cool thing you can do with that deconstruction planner. Let's say these trees are in the way. I want to build something out here. I can click and drag over the trees. And those robots will come along and harvest those trees for me. Now, other resources, it does not do that with, obviously. Uh, you actually have to have mines or oil harvesters or whatever. But this is a very nifty thing, especially when you're building roads or rails, um, or just making a new outpost. Um, I, I mean, I use this feature all the time uh, to get rid of forests. And I mean, there's only 10 logistics robots right now, so it's going to take a little bit of time. And they're not really upgraded at all. But, uh, but yeah, that's much more convenient than having to go through and manually chop down all the trees. So. Just something to keep in mind when you are doing your stuff. So, are you gonna get any any of the stuff that you need? You got some iron. Yeah. Well, that's the basic setup of it, anyway. It's it is gonna take a little while for these factories to catch up. Um, if I would have been thinking ahead, I probably would have uh, made some more robots off screen or something like that. And this episode is running rather long, so um, just trust me that it's going to work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so 
Uh, when we come back, I think what I'm going to do, since I don't have very much iron to mine out, and I keep running out of iron ore, I'm, I'm not right now, but that's because I'm not doing any research. Um, once I start researching stuff, this iron ore runs out insanely quickly. Um, I think what I might do is go to either one of these two iron deposits and start using a rail system uh, to bring that to my main base. So next episode, um, I'm going to cover the basics of railroads. So look forward to that. Um, but yeah, if you like this episode, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions whatsoever over logistics or construction robots, um, please let me know in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I know there's a lot to cover, and I like to think that I covered most of it, but maybe I didn't. Um, but yeah, and if you want to see more of this series and other series that I'm doing, please hit subscribe. And as always, take care of yourselves out there, and thanks for watching.